I'm David, I'm one of the developers of Scalar and today we're really excited to introduce the new features of Scalar 2.2. Um, I think it's become much more of a complete workstation now with um, several new features including the all new bass mode and melody mode which allows you effectively to um, create your chords in your usual unique way that Scalar allows you to and assign those chords to any number of over 100 different bass lines that respond to your chords or melody lines formed in sets. There's also new navigation features um, and an all new enhanced edit mode. So I'd love to take you through the features of Scalar 2.2. Okay, so in this logic session here, I've just basically got a couple of loops from the Carl Cox Loop Masters pack and I want to effectively write a house tune. You can see I've labeled the um, instruments with what I'm eventually going to put on, but without Scalar involved, um, I've set up some uh, instruments. Um, couple of lead sounds there, what will be a bass sound. Um, one lead sound, another lead sound, and something I'll use for melodies. Um, okay, so let's um, pull up a Scalar 2.2. And the very first thing you'll notice about Scalar 2.2 is the navigation features. Um, so as I'm now writing, um, intending on writing a house tune, I'm going to pull up um, the from the genre-based chord sets, House 4. Scalar's become quite a complex piece of software and it's got so many different things it can do that I think we really were missing, oh, I certainly was a, as an artist, um, an easy way to navigate around all the pages and know exactly what all the pages were and you can see here now we've got main, edit, chord, pad and modulation mode and you can click through on the um, on the GUI but you can also command one, two, three, four, five across the screens and command zero to get in and out of settings so it's a really easy way to navigate around. Um, okay I'm going to grab these chords and I'm going to bring them down to the chord builder. Um, now I want to change a few things, I don't want to end on that C minor. I want to finish on this E flat major. Um, but you can see the voicings very different to the rest of them. So um, I could go uh, Command 3 and go into chord mode and I could um, select D on the circle of fifths and scroll through and find a uh, suitable um, E flat major chord. Um, but I'm just going to come back into say edit mode and um, I'm going to steal the voicing or extract the voicing from the first chord, which I like. So extract the voicing and I'm going to apply it to this E flat major. Apply the voicing and now it's going to be, yeah, much more in tune with um, the rest of the chords. I'll just bring it up a little bit by inverting it uh, and I'll also invert this A flat major here. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to bind this area down the bottom and we'll just listen to those chords. Okay, cool. Um, as uh, you can see, I've got a kick here ready to go. So I'm now just going to um, record uh, those chords. Okay, cool. Um, so there's my chord progression. You can see it triggering the scale of the chords there. Now going up to the E flat major. So effectively those chords are now going to become the basis for all the different elements um, and will be the same chords that I'll use across all the different scalars. Uh, okay, um, as you know, I've got a second lead instrument here, so I'm just going to copy that um, scalar straight across. Um, and obviously, I could just load a scalar and I could sync them, but just to make it easy. So here we go. So I've now got those uh, same chords playing across two different instruments. Okay, cool. So I want a bass line. So what I'm going to do is rather than play these staccato notes, I'm going to allow Scalar to play um, a bass line from its new bass mode. So I'm going 
going to effectively make these um, long notes. Okay, and now I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy one of those scalars across. And now I'm going to pull up this scalar that I've just copied across, triggering that, um, that bass sound. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into bass mode. And in bass mode, what I have is we have over 100 different bass lines categorized into genres, as you can see, that will respond to the chords that you play or trigger. Given it's a house tune, uh, makes sense to pull up one of the house bass lines. I might go for, say, house bass 14. Yeah, cool. I mean, there are many, many variations. House 13. Yep, cool. I'm going to go for, in this particular tune, I'm going to go for house bass 7. And you can see it's triggering um, the bass line is playing along with the actual chords. Um, obviously, I could just be in scale mode, so it'll just keep um, it in the scale of A flat Lydian, which I'm in, without moving around with the chords. But in this instance, I really do want it to move around with the chords. So if I add those original chords, you can see. Great. Okay, it's exactly what I wanted. Cool baseline to go with the um, the actual chords. Um, I'm going to copy those trigger notes straight down to um, another scale which has my uh, lead sound. Okay, cool. Um, and what I'm going to do is copy the scalar across to that particular channel too. Um, and I'm going to now look for a different. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go for house seven. I'm actually going to pull it down to house twelve. Um, and effectively looking for a lead line. So again, just a different. Could have been anything. Could have gone to house. Yeah. So. It's not only just really for bass lines, but it's also, you could say melodies, although we do have a devoted melody um, um, section, but for leads as well. And that's exactly the, the intention here. So um, uh, I've got another um, scalar. Remember I had two lead, lead sound scalars. Um, so I'm just gonna copy that one straight across there um, and copy that down. So now both these scalars are gonna be playing Exactly the same chords, notes, and the same um, number 12. House 12, cool. Um, okay, so I'll bring in the rest of the stuff. Okay, great, so scale is basically, effectively, by using the house uh, one of the house chord sets, I've come up with some nice house chords. Um, I've added a bass line um, from the house um, uh, bass line sets and I've added also some lead sounds as well. So now I want to introduce a melody. So this is my sound. Um, and I want Scalar to help me generate a um, melody based on the same chords that we've been using. So I'll, I'll copy those trigger notes down um, I will pull up um, or copy one of the scalars across. I'll open it up and that's in bass mode. That's not what I want to use. So I'm now going to go to melody mode. So we've been in bass, bass mode. I'm going to go to melody mode. I'm going to show you, um, delve into the melodies and what they actually mean a little bit later on to give you a bit more of an example. But we've effectively got them categorized into colors, motifs and themes. Themes are more filmic. Motifs are more based on uh, modern electronic or pop music um, or rock and colors. They're not such strong melodies, but they're more um, uh, designed to augment um, or um, kind of color any leads that you've got going in there. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to, you'll notice that each set has four variations or the top one, which basically plays them all. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna call up motif G. 
it's now just going to play that that motif G melody line. And again, these are melodies that have been written written by um, several composers on the team, plus some other composers that we've gone out to, and they're they're really fantastic melody lines. So let's have a listen to motif G responding to the actual chords that we've been using in our tune. One of the other things is, um, as per phrases, you can play um, the chords and the melody, as you can hear it's doing there, or you can say, no, I just want the melody only. And I think that's one of the main differences between melody mode and phrases. Phrases are chords interpreted as a pianist may interpret it, but very much based around the chords. And melodies are purely based around single melodic lines. You can hear that. So I'm gonna, in this instance, I'm gonna play it with the uh, with the actual chord. Yeah, cool. All right, let's have a listen to how that sounds with the rest of the tune. Just mute the kick so we can hear just Gaylor's playing. Cool. Um, I mean, it's 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 really great, really easy ways to to come up with um, with uh, bass lines, lead lines, and melodies. Once you've found your chord sets, you could obviously you could just uh, duplicate this channel down here. Um, and let's say I come to this guy and um, uh, pull him up and just want a variation. I'm going to say, oh, don't play motif G. Play play color A as an example. So what it'll do there is play motif G here, uh, and then when it gets to this section, it'll play another variation, which is um, color A, let's call it color A. Now it'll give me a variation on that melody, here we go. Yeah, so really easy way to come up with um, back to the original melody. Um, and of course here now, if I just add those loops. Um, again, so yeah, you can see that we've, um, we started off with our original chords. Um, we then added, um, Pulled up uh, another scaler and uh, went into bass mode. Chose a bass line. Um, then pulled up another instrument. Um, chose house 12 bass to use as a, uh, a lead. Um, and then came in and chose motif G um, to come up and create, all based on the chords that we did. Um, it's a really easy way to um, um, create entire tunes using Scalar. Okay, I want to have a look at a couple of other features. Here I've got um, uh, Mosaic Keys, um, and I'm going to assign a Scalar to it. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to control it using um, Scalar. We're going to pull up a straight C minor, and I'm going to bind it. Okay, so I'm going to play one, six, four, and then I'll go seven and three. Okay, cool. Uh, let's record that. Okay, cool. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to open up a regular scaler here, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to select an internal bass sound. I'm going to go. Um, I could try bass guitar, so that's the internal sound. I'm going to pull up um, bass mode. I'm going to call funk, um, let's try say funk 13 or funk 14. Um, again, straight into C minor. Uh, I'll play those same chords. Uh, 
So if I just, um, actually I'm just gonna play just the C minor and you can see it running through that entire bass line. Uh, so you get so many variations of bass lines, which is really cool. I'm gonna pull up Funk 5. Yeah, and I'm not gonna move around. I'm actually just gonna stay on that C minor. So um, I'll record that in. Now I could have, if I wanted to, I could have actually just dragged these um, across, these trigger notes across, um, given that they're in the C minor scale, this triggering the same chords as, as my um, Mosaic keys. Uh, and here, it's gonna go up and down with the chords. Um, now I can hear something um, in that long F minor chord here um, that, um, seems to be uh, moving off into a different direction. That's the whole thing and lovely thing about the bass lines is, is that um, they're written really to be quite versatile. So you can come up with all kinds of different bass lines and that means that sometimes uh, it might play a major seventh when, it, when your chord doesn't have a major seventh or a minor seventh, for example. So we've, we've tried to find the real fine line between making it compatible with everything and making it interesting. Um, and there's so much versatility in this instance, I'm just gonna re-trigger the chord again. Um, of course, I could have just, uh, so that gave me an interesting rhythm, but I could have just um, re-triggered it here. Yeah, really cool. Okay, here I've pulled up um, an Omnisphere, and I've got a rather um, strange patch, which is the Jazz Combo Stacks. Um, and I'm going to see where the scaler can um, give me some content there. So I'm going to, uh, again, just pull up a scaler to control that patch. And so it's doing the same thing as the other things. I'm going to call up the C minor um, scale. And I'll just copy those same trigger notes across. Okay, to make it interesting, I'm going to go to the rhythms and I'm going to pull up... Um, I'm um, going to go to um, intermedio, uh, intermediate speed, and I'm going to go fortissimo. Okay, that's cool. Um, now, I just to give it a little bit of variety, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the humanize um, section, and you'll notice that we've introduced quantize and swing. So just by turning the velocity on, it's going to... Uh, change the velocity of each note, thus triggering a different voice. But I want to start um, uh, maybe swinging it a little bit more. So what I might do is I might come into the um, swing... Uh, I might go for triplets here, and I'm going to go to, just to show you the extent of how now you can apply different templates, groove templates or swing templates across all scalars. So I'll go swing um, uh, twelfths um, at 80%. So you can hear that. Yeah, great. Now what's really cool is that I can come over to the scalar baseline and I can say, okay, I like that, um, that swing. Um, so let's do the same thing here. Let's pull up swing twelfths. Um, and you can see now they And of course I can do that um, here too. And that applies really to any rhythm. Um, they don't have to be triplets. They can be straight sixteenths, eighths. I mean, there's a, a, a wealth of um, different um, swing tempos. So you can see there now everything's just playing in triplets, which is really, really cool. Um, and of course, um, Quantizing works to quantize things to lock them straight on the beat. If you're, for example, using a bunch of expressions, and when we re record things and program things in a scalar, we try and do them the way that the musicians intended them. So they're always moving about, and sometimes you can find that they're slightly um, off from each other. Uh, the timing might be slightly off, and that's a really cool way to just grab the quantize and, and 
put them all on. Okay, I want to have a look at one of the other features that's new in 2.2. Um, so uh, here I'm going to go C minor scale. I'm going to pull down a C minor and an F minor, and I'm going to um, um, just uh, put it into door sync mode by right clicking. Um, and now if I hit play my door, yeah, it's going to play those um, those chords. Okay, cool. Um, so what I'll do is I'll um, use one of Scalar's internal sounds, the wide pad. Great, okay, so I'm gonna use those chords again for another Scalar. So again, I'll go C minor, pull down those same chords. Um, this time I'm going to pull up the internal, an internal bass sound. I'm gonna go for retro bass, and I'm going to go into bass mode and I'm going to choose Trans Bass 2. Okay, so effectively now I'm in Door Sync here as well. So when I hit play, I should hear this bass line with my original chords. Yep, cool. Okay, that's great. Um, now let me add another section. So I'm going to pull up a scalar, um, pull up that C minor scale. I'm going to C and F here. Uh, I'm going to uh, right click on the play button. So it um, plays in, in sync. Yep, great. I'm going to pull up the substantial internal sound and I'm going to go to rhythms and I'm going to come into volante, which are fast rhythms, and I'm going to call up marziale. Cool. So effectively now I've just got my three scalars triggering the um, two chords. Um, and I want to introduce a melody. So I'm going to pull up a final scalar, copy this scalar across here. Um, so now it'll be playing this third scalar. But now what I want to do is I want to pull up a, um, uh, a melody. So um, rather than playing that same rhythm again, I'll go back into melody mode and I'll pull up um, let's go to motif A. Um, yeah, cool. Um, now, the way they, they work, the, the actual key switches on the left represent which section of the melody it's going to play. Uh, the furthest left, which I'm now triggering by holding my C1 key, is going to play the entire melody. So if I just hold it down, Uh, probably easier if I actually just um, uh, tell it to only play the the melody. So, okay, let's go back to melody. And it goes back around. There you go. So they were actually in four parts. So I could actually trigger part one, I could trigger part two. Um, by key switching, I trigger part three. And I could trigger that final part. So it really gives me lots of variation. So I could be playing, say, the C minor on, on uh, let's say C minor on one. And uh, now I'm gonna say, give me melody two on the F minor. Go back to melody three on C minor. And melody four on F minor. So yeah, so it really gives me a, a great, um, many different ways of um, moving melodies to your chords and selecting which part of the melody you want to trigger to those chords. Okay, in this instance, I'm just gonna say play motif A. Uh, now I'm gonna solo this because I just wanna show you a couple of things. You'll notice that Scalar's always re-triggered every time you change chords. In this instance, it's re-triggering the melody. As it goes to the next chord, it re-triggers. Um, and we've all, always given you the option to change the timings for each chord and change the performances for each chord. But now what we've got is something called groups. Um, and what I can do is I can say, okay, um, 
Uh, these are the global settings, so everything you've got here, but now I want them to react specifically to what's in this group. So now they're both gonna respond to group one. So I'm going to say, okay, um, motif A, that's where I am, melody, um, chord based, um, and it's re-triggering. So what re-trigger does in this instance here is that when I play through and swap chords, the melody will trigger again back from the start. And you can hear that just to make that up. Just to make this a bit more obvious, I might go into back to the felt piano and you'll hear that. And the melody start again. Okay, um, I'm actually going to go to um, something that, that a melodic part that changes a bit more, which is part two. And I'm going to say chord and melody so we can actually hear those changes. So here we go. And now it'll start again from the start with a new chord. But what I'd like it now to do is follow. So that means keep the melody line playing, continue at the position when you switch, but in the new chord or new key. So now you'll hear the melody continue whilst playing the new chord. Yeah, so it really adds a lot of flexibility. Back to re-trigger from the start, you'll see the melody go back to the start. following so it means you can continue not only melodies but phrases um, uh, either have them re-trigger or continue their position I think that adds a lot of flexibility what I could also do is I could say let's go back to um, melody only as it's a little bit clearer um, I'm gonna put now um, everything in um, uh, sorry I've got them both selected here. I'm gonna go back to group one here. Um, and you can see it's instantly made another group, group two, um, and it's copied um, those settings across, which is perfect. Cause actually I'm gonna say, um, for this second one, I wanna choose a different melody. So I'm gonna go motif C1. Um, and uh, let's, um, we can follow there. So we can hear now it'll swap to a different melody. Let me put this in a melody only mode, melody only mode. So different groups into a different melody. Yeah, really cool. So now if I just play that along with everything else. And of course I could choose anything. I could say, okay, let's try motif uh, J2 for that first one. Yeah, um, let's try one of the themes. So really great way now with enhanced edit mode to just basically play around, have different chords triggering different melodies or different bass lines, um, either re-triggering the bass um, line or the melody line every time you change chords or follow whereabouts it was in the melody. Um, and just all the other um, different ways um, you can basically come up with chords, melodies, bass lines, applying different swings and of course navigating around. Um, it's a really brilliant new update for me. I think it's really open Scalar up as a complete work tool. It's given me total flexibility. I can just be completely unique and do my own thing. I can find bass lines and um, um, write things uh, based on some inspiration that I might find within Scalar navigate around nice and easily. Thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoy Scalar 2.2.